Woo! That was gonna go a lot better in my head. Ah. Woo! My app, my people, is on the App Store. Have a look at that. This morning I got the message your app has been approved, it's ready for sale, and it's now on the App Store. So all of you, you can now go download my app. Pretty wild to think about it. 50 episodes I've made on YouTube where I've just been recording my whole process, and now we're finally there. The app is live, the app is ready. And I thought, you know, why not just go out on, and I'm not sure if this is going to be my last video, this may be my last video. Episode 50 feels like a good round number to end that, right? But I thought, why not rewind and show you my process? I built an app in 10 months. It's been a lot of ups, a lot of downs, a lot of talking on YouTube, a lot of coding, a lot of late nights, a lot of early mornings. And I finally managed, without really knowing how to code, build an app. To show you how, we need to rewind a little bit. <laughs> Ah, here we are 50 episodes later after I said that I was going to start a startup. Whew, that's warm. I am starting a startup. Almost exactly 10 months ago, I decided I was going to start a big project. Why, you may ask? Probably a combination of boredom, ambition and mental illness. You see, I've tried a lot of random shit in my 23 years on the surface of this rock. To fully explain it, we need to rewind a bit. I have tried my hand at all kinds of random stuff. I tried to be a YouTuber and do football content. I tried to sell clothes that were absolutely hideous. I had a famous fitness Instagram account which I later sold. I sold fitness plans online until they leaked on Reddit. I tried to make a card game where I did everything in a completely wrong order. I wrote two books. I started a social media company, built some websites and developed some strategies for other companies. Naturally, after doing all of this random shit, it was time to move on to something else. So here's the deal. I've been a meathead for a large part of my life. The science I took in school was design and technology. Basically, I was building letterboxes while the other people were investigating how the air particles co-varied with the book particles in order to make some text atoms on a page. Or something along those lines at least. I have always liked trading and in true meathead fashion, my favorite hobby has been picking up heavy things and putting them back down again. Real productive. Because of this, I got to August 2020 and just after writing a second book about something which I knew nothing about, hashtag fake it till you make it, I thought, hmm, why not learn how to code? Because why not, right? So I did. I took some courses online, learned Python. Okay, I would not say that I learned Python, but I knew enough that I could do some basic stuff. I felt like a real hacker. Then in January of 2021, I realized that I could not really design any cool things with Python. So I set out to learn something else. I put my excellent research skills to the use and picked the first thing which popped into Google when I typed how to make an app. This is where I was first introduced to Flutter and Dart, which is what I learned. I started building all kinds of random things. Journal apps, country guides, you name it, I built it. Then one day I got the idea to build a real proper app. So it took six months and built a cocktail app which helped me learn a lot, but my liver hated it. However, I had this idea for a while that I wanted to build a larger product. A real massive product, I mean, with dependencies and all kinds of things. This is when I decided to build Wonder Sagas, an audio stories app for kids. Wonder Sagas, I'm sure you've seen this name so far but this is what it's based on. We have outsourced so many parts of parenting to YouTube, Netflix, iPad apps, Candy Crush. We have three-year-olds who know how to play Angry Birds. That's the level we're at. But I don't think this is all negative. I think, you know, there's probably a very good part of it where you as a parent can save time and your kid can get just as much enjoyment out. And this is one of those examples. And the way I want to address this is by creating a platform or a service or an app, whatever you want to call it, that features kids' stories. Why, you may ask? The answer here is as ambiguous for all the other random stuff that I tried. I just felt like it. I then decided to call the project Starting a Startup, mostly because I like how it sounds, and it's always fun with some razzle-dazzle. I then decided that I was gonna document it. Why, you may ask? Well, for that we need to rewind a little further. The year is 2013, this is 14-year-old me. I was pale, frail, and had a problem with wind. I had decided that I was going to be a YouTuber and I started making football videos where I would just take shots on an empty goal and add music in the background. Real entertaining stuff if you ask me. I grew obsessed with this and would do it every weekend. I also fell in love with making videos so I started filming all kinds of stuff. School trips, football games, 
summers. I have four terabytes of just video footage from my childhood, which is pretty wild because I filmed it all myself. Most of it is horribly bad, but it would be so much fun to look back at it when I'm 72 and I've blown my back out from deadlifting. Therefore, I thought, why not document the entire process of building my app, releasing it and then marketing it? This is what I did, and that's why I've been making all these YouTube videos that maybe you've watched or maybe you haven't watched. So, here we are, August of 2021, and I started off with my app project. I started by making a plan. The plan was simple. It was to code an app, buy content for the app, release the app. Like I said, I've made a business plan. I'll go through in more detail once I've made the whole whole budget and, you know, actually show you because probably at this point, this seems like it's a talk show. But it's really not meant to be. This is kind of like the introduction of it, if you will. However, it turned out to be a bit more complicated than that. I've been Googling, I've been watching Nigerian YouTubers with 200 views make tutorials on it. I can't figure it out. I started off by having to learn how to design an app in Adobe XD. And I realized that I'm about as good as designing as speaking Swahili. Akuna Matata. I got around this though by watching a lot of YouTube on design. And soon enough, I had something that I was quite happy with. I started off coding and it was surprisingly easy. It's like, should it be this easy? Should we go on this fast? I'm sure now I'm just, you know, jinxing myself by saying that it's easy. And then BAM, I'm gonna get hit by a truck in a week or something. Deja vu. I just been this place before. Probably, I feel like I'm going too fast. And you know, when I'm doing this in my mind, l let me give you a real time view of what it's like in my head when I feel like I'm going too fast. We, we don't need a plan. plan. We you see, it's going quickly, it's going we well, we don't need to plan and everything. everything. Plan. Sometimes think we need to plan. In the middle of September 2021, I had something which somewhat resembled an app. With the logic, we made the app bar at the bottom. We have, you know, the different categories which are available right now. Obviously, this will be more in the future. However, I found out that copying the design that I've made of the app in Adobe XD onto the actual code was like drawing a French girl with your left hand and both your eyes closed with someone spitting water in your face at the same time. At this point, I probably worked the hardest of the entire period. I would sit up at night, wake up at 6 in the morning to code. What's popping? So it's 6 a.m. No, it's 7 a.m. I probably worked 70 to 80 hour weeks because I felt like an absolute unit. I then moved on to beta testing this app with friends and family, where I found out that I had a lot of bugs and very few helpful friends and family, as only about 3 out of 20 people invited provided feedback. So what we're doing basically is we're sending the app to Apple and we're saying, hey, review this so we can send us out to testers, and after that we'll be submitting it to, to the test group essentially. Right now I think we've got 8 testers, I think I want to get like 4 or 5 more so that we have over 10 at least, so we can collect some... Uh, valuable feedback. Yeah, after that we're just gonna send it out, let them test it for a week, see what they say, work on some other things in the meanwhile. But I think now I'm actually gonna take the Friday off, you know? 9 o'clock, we're gonna call it here for the week. Continue again tomorrow, of course. No weekends off. Hashtag grind. But yeah, we're, we're making steady progress. This is a milestone launching the beta program and I think the next clip I show you is gonna be where I send out the email to all of the participants. Then we'll take it from there. First of all, from my very good friend, I got this very good feedback from uh, on email, you know, this is the only person who actually sent the uh, proper feedback for all of this. So let's uh, go through what he has to say. So for Test Saga 19, he says, the it does not appear to work. Obviously, this is in Swedish, so you'll have to take my translations. If we test, yeah, Test Saga 19, all gray. After this, it was around November and time to start buying content. So it's become time to start acquiring content and the storage which we're going to put in the app. We have the structure, we have the app itself, and now we just need what's going to go inside of the app for the first version, the beta version kind of thing. I'm not creative enough to write stories myself. If I'm going to write kids stories, it's going to be shit, you know? What is it going to be about? People making code in their closet? I don't know. So we need professionals, and for that we need to pay cash. Italians bring cash, okay? This is the part where I blew my budget. I actually spent so much money on Fiverr that I ended up becoming a lifetime Fiverr VIP member. Exclusive access to one of the most pristine clubs in the entire world, Fiverr Select. No. Okay, a lot of you probably got clickbaited right there, and to that I say, tough luck. All in all, I spent around 50,000 Swedish crowns or $5,000 of the money from my social media company that I mentioned earlier. And who would have guessed that I blew my budget considering that I made the entire budget using coffee pods at the very start of this process? 11,000 Swedish crowns in corporate gains taxes. Taxman has gotta have his share, his slice. I don't know where he was when I was doing all this work, but you know, that's what it's like. Uh, gotta pay your taxes, people. Boom, 
I used a lot of this money to pay ghostwriters and pay voice actors who produce content that turned out to be pretty sick, if you ask me. Just listen to this one, for example. Chester, the farmer. One day, Ruby, Riley, and Rose were coming home from school, and they saw five sheep roaming down the lane. I'm now sitting on around a hundred of these stories to begin with and I think it's a great start and we have a lot of content to put in the app. After I had all of the content, we moved on to some more advanced stuff. This was probably four months of just fixing bugs, adding minor features, the hard stuff essentially which I didn't do at the beginning and I left off for later on because I thought maybe I'll learn more then and I'll be able to do it then. And I was kind of right because I managed to figure it all out. And I like everything on the audio page basically is laggy. Then we have some other stuff like for example when you favorite the song or you want to rebuild the homepage etc etc. So, we have about 3 hours because at around 3.30, a beast will arrive here, namely my parents' dog that I'm going to be looking after for the rest of the day. So we're probably not going to get too much done uh, once he arrives because he's a wild boy and he's going to want to walk, he's going to want to play, he's going to want to chew up my couch, you know. So, we're going to try to get as much stuff as we can done before that, so let's get to it. We built a website. We need a website as well. Fixed a lot, and I mean a lot of bugs. dealt with a lot of frustration. I don't even know where to begin explaining all the issues which I currently have right now. Ah, ah. Now they're drilling right above me. Nice. And then touched on some kind of burnout. I've been feeling so unmotivated and so unproductive and I've been procrastinating with this whole app. We added more advanced sign-in and payment capabilities to the app, launched another beta test, fixed some more bugs and added some new features. We accidentally committed tax fraud. Details have not arrived with us within two months of December 2021. The company will have to pay a second delay fee and there may be liquidation of the company as a whole. What's ironic is that when I made the budget video, I made a specific statement saying that, you know, we're not gonna do any tax fraud, we're not gonna mess up any of the legal stuff. We, have, we haven't done any tax fraud, and we have gone and done just that. Made some more YouTube videos, which I felt as if I had gotten quite good at. Just watch this example, for example. <laughs> Pretty sick, right? I made a very basic marketing plan, wrote together some legal stuff after watching a highlight reel of the Johnny Depp and Amber Heard trial on YouTube. Is, is that, do I have to answer that question? No, no. And then we were ready to go. With that said, let's press save and press add for review. Let's do it. So let's hope that they approve the app this time. Submit app for review. Your submission has been submitted to App Review, okay. I ended up submitting the app at Apple nine times before it was finally approved and available on the App Store. I felt like getting back to an abusive ex when I had to keep reaching out to this poor Apple developer who had to test my app. But one morning, I had the notification there, your app has been approved. And there we have it, ladies and gentlemen. Ten months later, my app is complete. It's on the App Store. The link will be down below. So please go download it. Leave a good five-star review. Well, I can't really say that. Don't leave a good five-star review. Leave a review which you think is accurate and which you think is good. Thank you. With that said, these ten months have been a blast. I've learned probably more than I've done at any other point in my life. I've made friends online that I never thought I was going to make. People on Instagram, people on YouTube. So if you've been an OG on YouTube watching from the beginning or if you just joined, thank you so much. I really appreciate you. The support you've shown has been great. Uh, big shout out to one of my, my gym bud, William, for listening for 10 months about all of my plans and all of the stuff and for him helping me a lot with beta testing. All of my other friends, you know who you are, my family. Thank you so much for your help. Couldn't have done it without you. And yeah, pretty wild to think about. This is probably one of the things that I'm most proud of in my life. I took something which I didn't know how to do, learned it over 10 months, overcame so many problems, so many obstacles, and now the app is actually live and working on the App Store. Now we've done the easy part, now it comes to selling the app, etc. I'm not sure if I'm gonna video that or if we're gonna continue the series, let's see. Thank you for rocking with me, thank you for watching these 50 episodes, it's wild that I've done 50 episodes on YouTube. Wow, yeah, a little emotional. Possibly the last time signing out. Thank you so much for the support, go download the app, test it out. And maybe I'll see you in the future. Peace.